3.1 trillion dollars with a T. That's how much money businesses are losing every year due to low quality or incomplete data. And that's just in the US. So if we can turn just a fraction of that low quality bad data into high quality accurate data, we can unlock millions and millions of dollars worth of value. Now, this is why if you're a business owner, one of your top priorities should be improving the quality and completeness of your data because good, reliable data can not only save you time, money, and headaches, it arms you with the insights and information you need to make smarter, more strategic decisions. And these decisions can unlock growth you never thought was possible. But there's one issue, and that's that data entry sucks and everyone hates it. It's slow, tedious, and prone to human error, no matter how good your SOPs or your systems are. So how do we fix this? Well, I'd love to say that AI can take care of it, but anyone who's toyed around with AI knows that the results can often be incorrect or misleading or sometimes downright false. So I've created a hybrid approach and I call it AI assisted data entry. Here's how it works. AI does the grunt work and then a human reviews and tweaks the data before submission. So let's jump into guide and I'll show you exactly how I've built an AI assistant without using any code that helps me add wines to my wine database. All right, so here's a quick preview of how my AI assisted data entry actually works. Now, we just have a very simple database of wines here, but each wine has quite a lot of information that we need to associate with it in order for our data to be up to date and complete. So let's go back to our wines table. Let's add a wine. In this case, I'm just gonna use an example wine, the Penfolds Grange. And rather than having to go through and manually select all of the information, we're going to use a feature called auto select. Now this is going to leverage AI to select every single option for us. And then we as the employee can tweak it according to our needs. So you can see here, it's identified that it's a red wine. It's clear. It's got a garnet hue with a deep garnet hue for that matter. The aromatic condition is clean. It's pronounced in its aromatic intensity. The development of the aromas is well developed. It's selected all of the aromas that we need. If we want to come in and add black currant or baked and stewed fruits, we can. We continue scrolling down. It's correctly identified the sweetness, the acidity, the tannins, everything, including the complexity. Then we click submit. You can see it's added here and we have all of that information done in an instant. So to me, that's pretty awesome. Now let's jump into how it actually works on the back end, right? So we go back to the data and we jump into the wines table. And you can see here we have Penfolds Grange. We've got all of that information automatically linked. Now what we've done is I've set up a form and when I submit the wine, I'm using that in several different columns. So the first column I'm using it is this one here, right? I'm saying the wine is AAA, and in this case, AAA is the name of our wine. So I'm saying, here's the wine, return an answer in the exact format below. So we want the wine type, the wine clarity, all of those things that I showed you before. So this is our template column. Then we are creating another template. And this is um, going to be how I set up AI to give me the correct response. So in this case, I'm telling AI that it's wine GPT, the world's best wine researcher and assistant. You return accurate and up-to-date information, etc., etc. Now, if we scroll down, this is just a list of things that I'm telling the AI to do or not to do. But this is where it gets uh, important. Down here, for each criteria I want to know about the wine, I've got options, and then I'm going to replace this with the options, and then I want to return a certain number of answers. So in this case, the wine type, there's only one type of wine it can be. In this case, it's red. So it's going to select from a number of different options. I'll present it with options like white, red, sparkling, uh, fortified, etc., And it's going to return one option that it believes is the most accurate. 
And it's the same as, for example, the aromas, right? So I'm going to give it a list of pre-approved aromas that I want it to select from. And in this case, I think it's, it's over 100 different aromas. And it's going to return six because I want to keep it concise and I only want it to return six aromas. And so you can see here, for example, for the aromas, this triple G right here is being replaced by a list of aromas that I've inserted into this table. If we scroll across to that list of aromas, uh, it'll be this one here. You can see I've got all of these aromas and all this is, is a joined list of all of the aromas in my aroma table. So all of these aromas here is just a list of all of the different aromas that I've added to my table. So this is really, really powerful because you can tell AI to select from a predefined, pre-approved set of answers, return that, and then automatically select what you want when you're adding the wine. And this is incredibly powerful because you can have uh, additional information that you can pull in once you specify what aromas this wine has, you can pull in additional uh, information like what class is the aroma, what type, is it primary, secondary, tertiary? What does the image of the aroma look like? And so it's just insanely, insanely powerful. So we'll go back to that form. So I've got the name of the wine. I've got my system template that's defining the system, telling AI what it is and what it does. I've got the message that I'm going to send to AI with the name of the wine. Then what I've done is this is where the response that the AI generates is pasted. And so you can see here it's selected red, it's selected clear, garnet, deep, clean, pronounced, etc. This is just a cleanup of this answer. Sometimes, for example, if you look here, um, after an answer, it can leave some unnecessary white space. And so for formatting, I'm just cleaning that up. I'm removing basically the white space and replacing it with just a single uh, new line. You can't see anything here, but that's what's going on. And then what I'm doing is extracting each line of the AI's response into a separate column because once we isolate the data that AI has sent, we can manipulate it, use it however we please, paste it into different cells, that sort of thing. And so you can do this, you can ask AI to actually send you a JSON response and then you can pass that JSON for those that are a little more advanced, you can pass the JSON. However, I have noticed that JSON does some sort of caching where it's returning previous answers. So I've tweaked it slightly and I'm using rejects, so regular expression to extract certain pieces of data from the response that AI has generated. Bit of a rambling, but you, it'll make sense soon. So here I'm saying from that cleaned up response, extract whatever comes after the wine type. So in this case, it's red. Here I'm doing the exact same thing. From that cleaned up response, give me the visual clarity. So we're extracting all of this information. You can see here. And then we are via an action, which I'll show you in a second, pasting the result that AI has suggested. We're pasting it into just a text cell. All right. So we'll go through that again. We've got the response here. We're cleaning it up. It's selecting from us from a predefined list of answers. We're extracting one uh, value from the response into the appropriate columns. Then once it's here, via an action, we're copying it and pasting it into a text cell. Now it's important it's in a text cell because we need to be able to change this value as we're tweaking and, and or adding new aromas or whatever it is. So, it might sound a little bit confusing, but once you understand how it works, it is quite simple and it's extremely powerful. So what I'm going to do is show you 
what happens when I click this button. So this button here is running a custom action and this custom action is called Wines Auto Select. So when I click this button, it's going to say that the AI request is processing. So this is just checking a Boolean column. Then it's gonna send a message to ChatGPT using the system prompt and the message we created. It's gonna get that response, paste it into our response cell. Then it's gonna get all of those suggested um, extractions and paste it into the appropriate cells. Because once they're in those cells, we can then tweak it and uh, it'll work perfectly. So let's just do another one. I'll say it's Penfold Grange. This time it's 2018 and I'll click auto select. So it said it's processing. It sent the message to ChatGPT. ChatGPT is going to return a response. The responses are going to be extracted and then they're going to be pasted into the text fields. So you can see here, it says red in the wine type. So it would have pasted uh, in the form, if we go to the form, it would have pasted red here. But if I come here and as a human or employee or whatever, change it to white, because it's the text cell, it's changed it to white. And then when I submit, you can see that it changes the uh, the data here. So I don't actually, I'm not actually showing what type it is, um, but what we can do is just literally add a new column and this is going to be the type. So you can see the type is white. So that's how it works. It's incredibly powerful. It's really neat in my opinion. So the applications for this can be for anything, any sort of data you're doing, if you create the, the 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 a good system prompt and a good message to send to chat gpt you extract that data you paste it into a text cell and then you allow the human or the employee to tweak you're going to unlock a ton of value if you want to learn more join low code school for free ciao